it's chatty abby and i'm here today with jeremy what are we talking about today jeremy well today we're talking about miraculous the tales of ladybug and cat noir which is on netflix kids if anybody wants to watch it i really got into it this week for the last two weeks mm -hmm. really liked it on netflix they have three seasons four seasons well it's it's very confusing so it's three seasons, but in Netflix it's divided into five seasons. So they have season one, and then seasons two and three are divided into two parts. So they have season two, part one, one season two, part two. Season three, part one, season three, part two. But with the two parts put together, it's about 24 episodes. 26. 20, 26 episodes. When we got to the end, I thought that was the end of the show because it had last come out in 2019. But it turns out there's another season coming. But the show is a French show. It's all set in Paris and they make it in French first and then it takes a while to get here because they have to change it all into English, mm -hmm. which is what I learned. And I was like, oh, that's why it's not on Netflix yet, but it will be. Yeah. So I was super glad to hear there's another season because I hated how the last season ended. It was terrible. Well, I hated the last season in general. The last season in general, part one and two were just part two. <laughs> uh, just part two. Part one actually has some of my favorite episodes in the whole show, mm -hmm. but part two was just really bad. It went way downhill. Can you, do you think you could pinpoint why it went downhill so bad? I think it went downhill so bad because at the end of season two, they kind of reached the peak of Hawk Moth's plan. And so after that, yeah. he was just kind of moving backwards almost. None of what he did really made much sense. Which plan was the best? peak of his plan. So his best plan was when he akumatized his assistant, Natalie, and she gave him the power to akumatize multiple people at once. And she didn't use the peacock thing during that time, right? It was she just did. a akumatize. Oh, so she had the peacock and he akumatized her. And well, then she gave that first he, so first he akumatized her and gave him the power to akumatize basically all of Paris. Yeah. And then when he's about to lose, then that's when she gets the peacock miraculous in order to save him with a giant moth. And that was a good plan. Yeah. And he also partners with uh, one of the normal villains, Lila, who's just a girl in Marinette's class who's a pathological liar. And the reason why he's able to turn everyone in Paris evil is because she creates an illusion that Ladybug kills Cat Noir, and so everyone in Paris is in despair. So his pa his plan is just so much better because he's Hakuma, like he's brought in allies, right, to work with him. Right. I really like that, and I kept feeling like he should get more powerful because Ladybug keeps getting more powerful. She gets better and better at her job. Cat Noir is getting better and better, and then they keep adding allies. She has like a access to a bunch of Kwamis and anytime it looks like they're gonna lose she goes and gets one and recruits one of her friends to help her and they have really cool powers and then they win mm -hmm. and Hawk Moth is just him and I feel like with them getting more and more powerful I started to lose interest because the villain wasn't getting more powerful but in that episode he was able to enhance his own powers and the the powers of his two allies so much greater that it made it really interesting again and i really liked that and another part of his plan was it wasn't just that he you know just gave someone powers and then let them run wild he actually had because he had so many people that he had turned evil he actually had a full strategy so he made sure to turn um Marinus classmate kim back into his akumatized version because he has the power to make people upset and so whenever they would defeat someone, he would just make them upset again and then re them. Right, that was the... the Dark Cupid. Anti-Cupid. Yeah. Yeah. And he would just shoot them with the hate arrows rather than, mm -hmm. like, the love arrows. And then they'd get upset, and then there were so many Akumatized butterflies. They would just immediately... So if that had been the season finale versus, like, the middle of the season? No, no, that was the end of season two. End of season two, Yeah. So that was such a great season finale. It was amazing. And they won by the skin of their teeth. And it was like, Ugh! and then, you know, it was great. And then you get into the next season and it starts out great. And then it just kind of, 
because you get to the end and I thought it was the end of the whole show and I was like I cannot believe you are ending on this <laughs> note so their whole goal is to get to Master Fu and get the box of all the other miraculouses mm. which makes a lot of sense so they go and he does he gets that box of miraculouses and what does he do with it well one he doesn't even bring Lila into his plan the second time mm -hmm. which when she was so incredibly helpful the first time he doesn't does he use the multiple hakumas again? I don't think he does. No. No, he does. He has the multiple hakumas? Yeah. Okay. But what he goes after, instead of Lila, he goes after... Chloe. Chloe. And he's going to get Chloe. Which it's like, okay, but why not do Lila and Chloe? Right. Like, that would make more sense to me. And the other big mistake is he gives Chloe the entire box of Miraculouses. Exactly. He get does it. He executes a really, actually, pretty flawless plan to get the box. Except as soon as she does miraculous ladybug, everything goes back to normal. So she needs to be out of her her ladybug costume in order for him to get the box and be actually able to keep it. And then he could accumulate minions, helpers, and then take down ladybug. Mm -hmm. But. Instead, he takes it in the middle of her battling somebody else, and she discovers that, and then he just has to end up abandoning the box at the end. Because mm -hmm. well, that's one thing I didn't understand. I was like, well, why did he just like go, oh, shoot, I lost, and he left the box of Mirac, like, why didn't he try to take them? But I think if she had done Miraculous Ladybug, she would have gotten it back. Uh, I don't know. Honestly, that those two episodes are just really bad in general. Because he gets the box. And you're like, whoa, now he's going to like, it's going to be hard to beat him. And he takes the box and hands him to Chloe, who he just turned to his side two seconds earlier. Mm -hmm. The entire box. Well, she does use him kind of cool in the very, very beginning, I guess. Because mm -hmm. she can like mind control everybody. Although everybody can mind control everybody. It seems like it's not like a yeah. rare power power so she goes she sends out her bees and she like mind controls everybody and then she's like anybody who has powers come here so everybody just lost their secret identity too right so i guess that was like a step in the right direction for the villain because mm -hmm. now he's he's definitely weakened her because all of her allies all of her allies now are known Mm -hmm. And then he, she, then she gives them each the miraculous, and then they or their Kwame, and then they all, you know, and so now they have to fight all their allies and Chloe, and then Master Fu just makes like a little turtle shell, and like hides in his turtle shell the whole time, and then they just like immediately win, and Chloe puts all the miraculouses on herself and starts crying, and then they all get <laughs> taken away from her, and that's the end. Blech. Yeah, Master Fu it. just in general was terrible. Everything right. he does is wrong. Every single thing. The, the only thing he does right, the only things he does right, he does by accident. Because he's like, we have to defeat Hawk Moth. We need a ladybug and Cat Noir. So he goes and picks two random young teenagers, not even older teenagers, 14 year olds, who are in the same class, in the same school in Paris, because they were nice one time. Pretty much. That's how that decision happened. And then he decides not to give any of the rest out. He says it's in order to make sure too many miraculouses aren't out at once. But then later he just starts handing them out left and right. So, I don't know. But he takes them back at the end. Which I feel like makes it even more dangerous because you're like, you pause fighting, go get the miraculous. Go find the person you want to give the to. Give it to them. S explain the situation. Go fight. Take it back. Go back to him. And it's like there's so many paths coming back to him that people could and, find you. Right. And that's the, the way Hawk Moth is able to find him is because Marinette has to keep going back to him to get Miraculouses. Yeah, all the time. Mm -hmm. The one useful function he has is that he can read the book about the Miraculouses. But the whole reason why he did that was so he could learn how to give Marinette new powers. But Marinette's the one that figures out how to give herself new powers anyway. Because he can't figure out, figure out that tear of joy maybe means a tear of joy. Yeah. 
he just starts putting in other random ingredients for some reason. <laughs> yeah. Okay, there... And then he like, he's also the reason that ended all the guardianship. And then the 14 year old cleans up the 200 year old man's mess and fixes it. And anyway, and then when his identity is discovered, he doesn't even fight. Like the, the other 14 year old kid, who's the kid who's the turtle guy? What's his name? Nemo. Nino is a better turtle after two seconds than Master Fu is. We're gonna go into specific episodes now. Do you have any episodes that you remember that you really liked? Or did you just want me to list mine? I, I think I just wanna go through yours because mm -hmm. when I got to the end, all I could think about was all the things I didn't like and I couldn't remember <laughs> anything I liked, but I was obsessed with watching it. So I know I liked it. So a lot of my favorite episodes were the episodes about Chloe. Mm. So my favorite episode was the Despair Bear episode where um, Chloe's just really mean to everyone. Well, she's really mean to everyone for most of season one and two. She's just pretty awful and, and is always going around firing people or threatening to have her dad fire people. And so at some point, Adrian says, you know, if you don't start acting nicer sometimes, I'm going to stop being your friend. So then her... Well, because what she does is she gets the whole school in trouble. Yeah she's and she gets out of it so everybody else has to like do janitorial work because she called the fire department to get out of class and everybody knows she did it and mm -hmm. she's like ah, you guys like cleaning anyway and that's when he was like look i can't be friends with you anymore this sucks mm -hmm. unless you decide to be nice mm -hmm. so for the first time she attempts to be nice mm -hmm. and the way she attempts to be nice is her butler goes around showing her her teddy bear that she had as a child and tells her what would be nice and what would not be nice based on what her teddy bear would do. So whenever she's about to do something mean, he just pops up randomly and says, no, 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 that's not what Mr. Snuggly no, he, would like, do. Goes like this little bear goes, what would Mr. Snuggly do? <laughs> and Mr. Snuggly has like diamonds for eyes. Mm. And then she goes, ah. Oh. And then she tries to think about being nice and it actually kind of works for her. Yeah. The thing, the thing he did wrong is he popped up in front of all of her friends and did, what would Mr. Snuggly's do where everybody could see her? <laughs> and that was really embarrassing for her. Mm -hmm. And so then she gets really mad and fires him. And then he gets hakumatized. At some point, I don't remember if it was during that episode, but I think at some point she actually helps Ladybug to save somebody. It was either during that episode or when her best friend gets akumatized. It was, or it was one of those times. She's actually, yeah, she was actually being helpful through the, it's the first time she's actually like had this thought of like, what should I be doing? How could I help? Which of mm -hmm. course, then she gets very conceited about that. I helped and yeah. Ladybug needs me and I'm <laughs> best friends with Ladybug, you know, which is also really annoying, but I don't know, makes sense. It's a step in the right direction. <laughs> it, it is. <laughs> I, I thought the, the the little bear's powers weren't like the most impressive. No, it was just another mind control power. But it's he could only control one person at a time and yeah. he had to be touching that person. But he was also hard to get because he was like this big. Mm -hmm. So everybody's like, where is he? Where is he? And they're like trying to find. The villains that are giant are a lot easier to see than mm -hmm. those little ones. That was like the beginning of Chloe not being 100% evil all the yeah. time. Mm -hmm. And of course you would like that. You yeah. always really like <laughs> redemption stories for villains. Yep. Yeah. Cause then they bring Layla in. Lila. Lila in. Mm. And Lila is the new class villain. Mm. And she's so much better at it too. Right. Cause Chloe's just annoying. And mm. then they, if Chloe like hurts people's feelings, I don't find it believable because she says the dumbest stuff and hurt like, that's ridiculous. Like what that outfit? And you're just kind of like, oh, ouch, you hurt people's feelings, mm -hmm. whatever. I mean, maybe when you're 14, that would be like hard or something. But Layla, on the other hand, Lila, Lila, <laughs> Lila on the other hand, is like a whole nother level of evil. Mm -hmm. And she actually has everybody liking her. So that makes it. And she's trying to get Adrian. Of course. <laughs> okay, what's your next favorite? Uh, my next favorite episode is one of the episodes from season three, part one. It, so it's the episode where Chloe actually is able to reject an Akuma. And she is the only character in the entire show who has ever right. rejected an Akuma after getting infected. I actually started wondering if you could reject it. Mm -hmm. Because he starts out 
going, you want this, you want that. I can give it to you. Just bring me Ladybug and Cat Noir's Miraculouses. Do you agree? And they always go, yes, Master Hawk Moth or whatever. Um, and so because they agreed to it, I was like, it seems like you could choose not to. Mm -hmm. It seems like an option. Yeah. But then nobody ever didn't agree to it. Mm -hmm. Everybody always immediately just was like, okay. So then I was like, well, maybe, maybe that is his power in it and you don't have that option. But then of all people, <laughs> Chloe goes, no, I'm not going to work for you. I work with Ladybug, which was so, so cool, which they also ruined in the finale of the fourth season, third season sure. of whatever's out because then there, then Chloe like, gets mad that Ladybug didn't give her her miraculous and immediately turns and goes, I'm on Hawk Moth's side now. And you're like, <laughs> you have the strongest will out of everybody to do the right thing two episodes ago. And now, and now you, <sighs> yeah. it was very upsetting for her that everybody keeps giving get, getting given their miraculouses except her but in that situation it wasn't even i don't think that had even happened in that episode no it had it had mm -hmm. like chloe had immediately told everybody she was queen bee like immediately i'm queen bee chloe and then well so when the first time she gets the miraculous she actually gets it because ladybug dropped it and she starts committing crimes so she can save them yeah, she's like, I'm a superhero now. I'm going to save this train. <laughs> <laughs> and, that's yeah. when, and I think that's when she tells people that she's Queen Bee as well. Mm -hmm. Well, because, yeah, because her mom's really upsetting and stuff. Yeah. Which I feel like her mom coming into the whole thing is like even further character development on why Chloe's the way she is. And you right. feel really bad for her. I think it's really cool how they do that because they have these like really rich, privileged children. And you feel terrible for them. You feel like uh, Marionette has like the best life out of all of them. Mm -hmm. And you're like, she really has the most privilege. Cause like Adrian, who's like a model and has all the money, gets locked in his room all the time and is never allowed to go out. And he's so, so excited and happy that he gets to go to public school. Mm -hmm. And that's like all he does. And then his, he like is alone. His dad doesn't even like eat meals with him. Mm -hmm. Um, and then like Chloe, who's like a spoiled rich privileged child, who's the daughter of the mayor and her mother is a fashionista. Her mother, who all she wants is her mother's approval. Her mother left her to go to New York and doesn't even remember her name. She keeps yeah. calling her <laughs> anything that starts with a K. Or a C. <laughs> or a C. Some of them are ridiculous. You said that she called her every single Kardashian name except for Chloe. Yeah. <laughs> Kendall, Kylie, like, I don't know if she used Kim though, but yeah, and her name's Chloe. You named your child, you can't remember her child's name. You realize that her mother has all those behaviors that are super annoying and that she's copying her mother to try to get her mother's approval, mm -hmm. which doesn't seem to work because her mother doesn't think of anybody but herself. Yeah. Chloe's actually learning to think about other people, but when she gets, she gets the Queen Bee Miraculous, when her mom's in town her mom's like well you're nothing special and she's like i'm queen bee and like then goes and tries to save people and stuff mm -hmm. like that anyway i really do like her storyline in general i think she's got one of the best story arcs because just like hawk moss story arc just kind of stopped making very much sense because mm -hmm. also hawk moth had like this moment where he was like i give up i'm never gonna win and that was right before then he had the really, really great moment where like this like great plan came together, mm -hmm. which I think was partly his assistant's idea. Yeah. So she's kind of the mastermind because Hawk Moth just kind of beats his head against a wall and mm -hmm. I've akumatized Pigeon Man 47 times <laughs> and he's never won. And you're like, why do you keep akumatizing the Pigeon Man <laughs> and the baby? Like, <laughs> why, why is that your plan? And then his assistant comes in and is like, how about we team up and you accommodize me and then I'll give you my powers and then, and it's like, whoa, great plan. Anyway, and then that kind of rejuvenates his like villain career. Mm. But then he kind of like 
goes back to just these really lame plans. I really like Hawkmoth as a villain, just in general. I think he's probably gonna make my favorite villains list just because of how hilarious all of his line deliveries are. <laughs> I don't care how many times he says his lines, and he says the exact same thing every time, I laugh every single time. <laughs> Come, my little Hakuma. And evil eyes now. Or, no, it's go, my little Hakuma. And evil eyes and now. He wins his and he his cane. And... <laughs> I think part of his, uh, his ability is to, like, know who and why, like, people's motivations from, like, a long ways away. Like, mm -hmm. he stays in his house and he can see and know who's having what emotion and what they're, like, motivation is mm -hmm. from his house and can see what's going on i feel like that's like probably the coolest part of his powers yeah because like ladybug and cat noir don't know any of that they have to wait till like it either happens right in front of them or they see it on the news and they go oh shoot and then they have to go try yeah. to stop it so anyway really like chloe really like lila ha. <laughs> It comes and goes. So his main motivation, they've they've established his motivation as he's trying to save his wife. But you don't really understand yeah, what happened to his wife. Yeah, that motivation doesn't really hold water. It, by, by season three, it doesn't really make much sense, honestly. Because they, they kind of seem to be alluding to the fact that she was using the peacock one, which is broken, and then she, like, is in some sort of coma? Or she's dead? Don't they don't know. ever say, but she's, like, kept in a glass box in his house, which is kind of creepy. Yeah. I mean, the motivations, at least in season one and two, make sense enough. But that's not really why I like, like Hawk Moth. I mostly just like Hawk Moth because he presents a very interesting threat that presents every person that he turns evil a choice. And I really like that whole concept. Like... Mm. Here's, I know what you want. I can get you what you want if you get me what I want. Yeah. All you have to do is agree and you can do whatever, which I think is really representative of just how evil is portrayed in general, which I really like. I was really sad that the teacher agreed because I thought for a second that she would say no because mm -hmm. they set her up as this like great character. And then all she wants is for love. And then he's like, we can force everyone to love them, each other. And I was, I was hoping she'd be like, no, no thanks. And then that would be the first example of somebody saying no to him. But she's like, yes, you must. And she turns everybody into zombies that hug each other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you're like, that's what you, <laughs> that's what you agreed to? Well, I, it's the juxtaposition. So you have someone who you would think would reject it ends up accepting it. And the last person you think would reject it is the one that does reject it. Yeah. Which I think is really cool. It's kind of like... You Chloe's see motivations are so much more complicated, though, than yeah. other people's, which is really cool. It's like, I, I don't think they set up people's motivations very well. Like, I, like what is even is uh, Marionette's motivation? Or, you know, Adrian's? Or, well, or, I or really the assistant? Like, the assistant's really helping yeah. Hakamoth, and you have no idea why. You can't figure out what the heck she's doing. Well, Adrian's motivations make sense, like... He doesn't ever get to do anything, so to be able to run around town as a superhero is like the ultimate fantasy for him. So his motivations make sense. Right, yeah. I mean, Marinette, I think they just say is she does it just because she's a nice person, which is not terribly interesting, but it's not bad. I mean, she has a really great parent, so it makes sense that she'd just be a nice person. Yeah, no, it, I think they set her up really well. It's just like a good person. Mm -hmm. And then she doesn't have much motivation outside of just, like, it's the right thing to do, mm -hmm. other than, I love Adrian. <laughs> but then at the end of the season, the end, she, like, goes off with Luca instead. And then they have that whole episode where when her and Adrian are together, the whole world ends, and they have to do time travel to fix, fix the mess, because her and Adrian can never be together. <laughs> Ugh. It's dumb. Well... Technically, the episode said that they can't be together if they learn each other's secret identities. So if they didn't know each other's secret identities, it w would probably be okay if they fell in love. Mm. But as Marionette, she decided to back off because... Right. 
well, one, she can't ever talk to him. And two, she's been trying for like 500 times or something to tell him how she feels and she can't. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's just dumb. But now they've set them up with other people. So if they're going to get them together, they each have to break up with the people they're with now in order to get Which back together. Which is going to happen. Yeah, but that's going to take like three more seasons. Ugh. Yep. That's how it goes. Yeah. I guess they're 14. They don't need to be with their true love right this minute. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's the only thing that makes me feel better about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next episode. The other episodes that I really like, really like I just like because they're really funny. So she, we already touched on the fact that Hawk Moth turns a baby into a super villain multiple times. <laughs> so there's that episode. I also really like the. Lollipop. I also really like the episode where um, her dad gets turned into a super villain because. She pretends that she's in love with Cat Noir in order to prevent him from finding out her secret identity. And her dad is so excited that he's just doing all this crazy stuff. And when she finds out that Cat Noir doesn't like her back, he's crushed and that's how he gets akumatized. I thought that was really funny. That was so cute. Mm -hmm. He like invites her boyfriend over and goes, of course he loves Marina. Everyone loves Marina. <laughs> and makes them like heart souffles and like heart pancakes and stuff. I just, I could never imagine my dad doing that when I was 14. <laughs> if I was like, I'm in love with this boy, he would have like the opposite reaction to that. <laughs> but I thought that was so funny. And then they're, they're both of the kids are like, uh as he's like going like overboard romantic for them mm. and then when it doesn't work out two seconds later he puts her in a giant thorn magical prison up in the sky so she'll never be hurt again it was really and cute. i really like how her mom the whole time is just kind of being very steady and realistic uh i'm not sure tom if you want to be doing that that doesn't sound like the best idea of course it's a great idea they're in love but you, you don't know if they're in love how could they not be in love he she loves him and who could not love her <laughs> <laughs> another episode i really like is the episode where she meets her grandfather for the first time and he's just like a hermit who just sits in his house making bread all the time <laughs> yelling at people for doing anything the way different from the way it was done 50 years ago or the way he specifically does it yeah because it's like it's not even about like time it's about like this is how it's done because he decided or somebody died he it just that decided way. you can't do that that's not how it's done <laughs> and then he gets akumatized and runs around going that's not how it's done and just is like destroying everything you can't use cell phones that's not how it's done. <laughs> you can't go to the movies. That's not how it's done. <laughs> I did think it was a little silly that she'd never even met her grandfather and he lived right down the street because he didn't leave his house. Because it's like, couldn't you just go there and see him? I don't know. I felt like that whole storyline didn't hold up very well. Well, he basically had dis disowned his whole family. So if they had gone over there, he would have kicked them out. The only reason she got in is because she went in to, as disguised as someone else. Otherwise, he would have yelled at her at the door and then slammed it and wouldn't let her in. That makes sense. And she wasn't she wasn't so close to it. Because, like, I can imagine as a child, because it was her dad's dad, I think. Mm -hmm. So, like, I can imagine as, like, your father being like, that's not how it's done. You can't come in here. Being, like, really hurtful and then not, you know, you're not wanting to kind of broach that subject again. But as a granddaughter where she's, like, her, she had a different ultimate goal of, like, mm -hmm. I'm going to have reunite you and dad for his birthday. Like, that, like, not really caring so much that he's all grouchy about it because right. you're not so close to the situation. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that does kind of make sense. Because whenever, <clears throat> whenever she tried to bring it up with anyone, they just would try to avoid the subject because they just didn't want to deal with it. Right, yeah, that makes sense. Because you're like, they're just such cool people. It seems like they should have been able to work this out. But anyway, and then he came. And I love how he didn't even change his clothes to, like, go to the party. Because, <laughs> like, she shows up. He never leaves his house. So he's in, like, these, like, weird kind of jamma-looking things. Changing out of your pajamas? That's not how it's done. <laughs> <laughs> I also really like the episode where her where Marionette's, like, really stressed because she's so busy. She babysits. She goes to school full-time. She has, like, a design company on her own. And she's Ladybug. 
all the time and she's getting into finals and just like everything and she just like was like super stressed and yeah so she was like designing clothes for her ba the band and she designs posters for like this like rock star i don't know she's like doing all these things mm -hmm. and her parents come up and go where are you at come play video games with us <laughs> and she's like i can't i'm too busy i have no time for video games and they're like <laughs> and they go downstairs and play video games without her and that's like the whole premise of that episode i thought that was so so cute i love that because like you know you have adrian's dad who's like did you finish your chinese lesson did you learn your piano did you learn you know and he's like you know like you're gonna be excellent at all these things and you have fencing and you have blah 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 and then marionette like her marionette's parents are like come play video games <laughs> I can't! I'm too busy! But then life will have no meaning. <laughs> <laughs> that was the next one I was going to touch on, actually. Really? So we already talked about it. That's super funny, because I also liked the villain, too, because he, he got mad that nobody would play video games with him, because he had made a video game. And that should be a real video game. Yeah, because they basically had every single villain from a whole show up to that point, and they were facing off against each other. It's basically Super Smash Brothers yeah. with the with the miraculous characters. Miraculous characters. I love that idea. How come nobody's made that? There, you're you're missing out. Because <clears throat> you looked it up, right? They yeah. don't have an actual game. No, there's just like a <clears throat> phone game where you collect cookies or something. That's dumb. No. Yeah. The video game in the show should be a video game. Yeah. Also, they have toys of Ladybug and Cat Noir throughout the show. And I don't know if that's just product placement, but it makes me want to have their action figures. Mm -hmm. So if they are selling those, you're doing a good job marketing them. <laughs> if you're not, you're missing out because you've already marketed them. <laughs> they have two different kinds because they have like these rag dolls that, um, marionette makes mm -hmm. she sewed them herself and those are so so cute and then they have like actual more like realistic looking like kind of plasticky action figure things mm -hmm. i kind of want both <laughs> of all of them <laughs> what's your next favorite episode? so i also really like um the cop so there's an episode where mm -hmm. he turns into like a robocop isn't that like the very beginning wasn't that, like one of the first episodes mm -hmm. yeah so I really like him. I just find his whole character really hilarious. The fact that he just writes tickets to everyone for everything. And he will he never writes just one ticket. <laughs> he'll always find 10 different tickets to write a person. <laughs> and he just keeps sticking them on their body. <laughs> they just get more and more angry at him. And he doesn't care. <laughs> and then half the things he's saying, I'm like, that cannot be a real lie. <laughs> Raising your voice to an officer? <laughs> <laughs> Frowning at an officer? <laughs> like, God, you can't ticket people for having feelings. <laughs> maybe you can in Paris. Well, when everybody's getting too much ties, maybe they made a law that you're not allowed to get upset because they turn into a supervillain. <laughs> then they'd be running around <laughs> ticketing the little baby all the time. Because the baby, every time he cries, can get akumatized. Which Hawk Moth does <laughs> multiple times. <laughs> so you just, you're in the stroller, you have your stroller and you have your little baby. Your baby starts crying because they, he's decided that he wants a lollipop, which is what it usually is. And then all of a sudden he turns into a giant baby and is running <laughs> around town smashing everything. And then they ha he has to get saved. And then, you know, the superheroes have to bring your baby back to you. Here you go. Sorry it happened again. And it's always the same baby. I know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just lazy animation because they're just like yeah we're not gonna draw another baby we already have one and then they draw that baby again because yeah they keep akumatizing the same people over and over again out of all of paris you know mm -hmm. also i think it's hilarious that hawk moth will purposely hakumatize people in his son's public school class and put his son in danger because like he knows that his son is in this class he doesn't know that he's cat noir but he knows that he's in this class and then almost every single classmate has been hakumatized like who hasn't been hakumatized other than marionette and adrian who are Adri Mar adrian been hakumatized adrian was hakumatized that's how he turned into the <clears throat> white cat noir in the future he got hakumatized oh he got hakumatized 
as Cat Noir though, not as Adrian. So nobody knows it was Adrian who was akumatized. Mm -hmm. And Adrian gets mind controlled and attacked by the akumatized people every third episode. Yeah. But that's, <laughs> but <laughs> he hasn't been like initially hakumatized. Actually, Marinette is hakumatized once. Time. So I think you might not have been paying attention during this episode. Hawk Moth had like this brilliant plan and he did the thing where he hakumatized multiple people again. Mm -hmm. And she was really upset. Oh no, maybe it was just her. She was really upset by Lila. She gets hakumatized and he says, bring me Ladybug and Cat Noir's uh, miraculous is she starts taking off her earrings huh? and the peacock lady the assistant mm -hmm. like falls over in a faint oh yeah i do remember that yeah it was multiple people yeah it was multiple it was people, her wasn't it? her mom or dad it's like a whole crowd yeah. of people and they're all like yeah and she he like turns around and like releases the hakumatized thing which has never happened before to like help her mm -hmm. and then Marinette's like oh no well it, no she he lost the ability to control multiple people because she's the one that gives him that power oh that makes sense yeah when you can't follow a kid's cartoon <laughs> <laughs> yeah so she did get hakumatized then yeah but her teacher multiple mm -hmm. of her teachers and her principal have been hakumatized mm -hmm. Layla, Chloe, Chloe's friend that follows her around. Sabrina. Sabrina, the girl with the dreads, the big mm -hmm. guy, the swimming guy, mm -hmm. swimming guy's girlfriend, swimming person who's not in their class, but same age. Video game guy, video game guy's robot. robot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, her best friend, Nino was one of the first to be, yeah, like every single person, I don't think there's a single person in her class that wasn't hakumatized. No, I don't think so. Yeah. Unless there's some character that they just don't show on the camera very much, but every character that we know. The girl with the know, purple stripe. Every even. character we know has been hakumatized within her class. Yeah. Except her and Adrian. <laughs> and Hawk Moth knows that he's putting his kid in danger. Yep. Like, and he just doesn't care, I suppose. They show him kind of caring when, you know, Adrian's about to die when he's falling off a building, but he still doesn't do anything. He just says, come on, Ladybug, save him so I can take your miraculous. <laughs> he doesn't really even and do Adrian's anything And Adrian's just falling point. and he's like, I trust Ladybug. <laughs> <laughs> She'll save me. So they show him kind of showing concern, but not really. Like he says he's concerned, but he doesn't really do anything about it. He doesn't particularly, like, he doesn't go out of his way to hakumatize his own son. But other than that, I mean, he even hakumatizes himself. Yeah. Which, okay, that's another thing. How come there's no plan? How come there's no goal to figure out who Hawk Moth is and actually stop him? Instead, they just, like, wake up every day, go stop the bird man again, <laughs> and then go back home. Like, they almost, they were like, look, we think it's... Adrian's dad, I forgot his name. Gabriel addressed. Gabriel. We think it's Gabriel. And they were pretty sure, and they were right. Yep. And then he did a whole plan to throw them off their scent, his scent. And that was it. And then it. that was it. <laughs> There's like, I guess we don't know. And then just nothing. Also, the one Master Fu could be trying to figure it out. All he does is lay on his the ground and nap all the time. I mean, he is 180, so maybe napping a lot would be, like, but <laughs> seriously. Almost every single time Marinette walks into his house, he is on the ground sleeping. Okay, what's your next favorite episode? Um, I think we kind of covered, I think we kind of covered all of them. Yeah, I think, I think they're all pretty good. I, I would just recommend watching all of them in order, I'm pretty sure. The thing is, Netflix has the episodes completely out of order, and that makes it kind of confusing. And they're the ones that split it up into multiple parts of the seasons, and none of that makes any sense. Why can't Netflix hire somebody to put episodes in order? Because, like, every single show on there is out of order. No, not every single show. So, I'm just bring you this complaint from different streaming services oh. so some shows on netflix are out of order i think miraculous is the only show on netflix where the episodes are out of order that i've seen 
Um, but then HBO Max has a ton of shows where the episodes are out of order, and Disney Plus has a whole bunch of shows where the episodes are out, out, out of order, and they do weird divisions of the seasons, like miraculous. I don't know. It's just very specific shows. They can't figure out when the episodes were, when it's all very publicly on Wikipedia. So, I don't know. <laughs> there should be, like, we should see if there's a complaint situ, like, area where we could, like, write them and let, no, like, hey, dude, we pay you every month so we can watch whatever we want and you can't even put them in order. Google it. <laughs> okay, so that's another complaint. I don't know, if you haven't seen it, We've just ruined everything. Oh, I, I put a spoiler warning in front of all of our... Videos. Videos. Yeah, because we... That, yeah, that's how we roll. But we'd highly recommend... I'd highly recommend it. I think it's a great kids show. Mm -hmm. I'm really into kids shows right now. So I would I recommend like everything except for season three, part two. It's just really bad. Don't watch it. Don't. I, I don't think there's much good about it. There's maybe, so I am going to put my preferred episode guide just because the show ends up getting really repetitive. So I just kind of isolated all the episodes where something really important happens. But besides that, everything's about the same quality or better, except for season three, part two. Well guys, thanks for watching. Love you, bye. <laughs>